So welcome to this Design Builder webinar, where we'll first show you how quickly um, you can build a certification model for energy performance certificates or building regulations compliance. We'll then repurpose that model to conduct overheating studies in naturally ventilated buildings with the minimum additional time and effort. I'm Dave Cocking and co-presenting on the overheating part of the webinar today will be Paul Santobi from Business Footprint. Our primary aim today is to give you a quick but realistic overview of the UK certification and overheating workflow and the main steps that, that you'd need to quickly generate certification certification and overheating results. Um, so although Design Builder includes the ability to undertake all common forms of building performance modeling that you can see here, um, for the purposes to, to, for, of today, we're going to focus just on these kind of certification aspects and also on a, on a very specific application of our Energy Plus uh, dynamic simulation tools. Following this introduction, there'll be two main parts to the webinar, each using live modeling to give you a real-time insight into the design builder workflow. First, I'll create a certification model from scratch. And I'm going to model uh, university halls of residence building, including a, a typical layout that, that we scale down for webinar purposes, just to show the, uh, the overall certification modeling process. That type of building requires a non-domestic energy assessment. And I'll use Design Builder's DSM interface which can be used for level three, four or five building certification for that. For those of you more familiar with Design Builder's SBEM interface, you'll see how familiar the DSM and SBEM interfaces really are. Once I've done that, I'll hand over to Paul, who will quickly repurpose the certification model that I created for overheating assessments according to SIBZ TM52 or TM59. SIBZ TM52, uh, used for assessing overheating in non-domestic buildings, was published in 2013. And although it was, a, it was a great step forward at that time, it does leave a lot open to interpretation. TM59 was released a few years later, 2017, um, targeted at domestic overheating assessments. And having learned from the experience of TM52, it overcomes some of the, the gray areas um, with a more prescriptive workflow. So given TM59 provides a much clearer process, we'll use that methodology today. Our aim today is to show you the workflow. So we're we'll only be talking about the specifics of the relevant methodologies where it's directly helpful um, to explain a, a specific model input. We'll explain the main modeling points in real time as, as we build the models, but to cover, cover the, the whole workflow over a relatively short webinar, we're obviously gonna have to focus on the key aspects of the process we will explain any assumptions or simplifications at the appropriate time. For those of you less familiar with Design Builder, there are a number of free resources, including past webinars, tutorials, case studies available from our website. Plus, of course, the program help that you can use to fill in any gaps. So why are we running a webinar on this particular topic? Overheating compliance for naturally ventilated buildings isn't a new modeling activity, but in the last few years, it's become uh, much more important for a number of reasons. And they include changing design standards with higher thermal envelope insulation, better air tightness levels, 
higher internal gains from ever increasing electrical equipment use and also um, in, in the context of a warming climate. These can all increase the risk of overheating um, in a naturally ventilated building. And that risk was realized in a number of buildings that overheated badly as an unintended consequence of improving energy performance standards, prompting the need for SIBSI TMs 52 and 59. In the last few years, these methodologies have been increasingly adopted by many of the regulatory authorities and organizations. Uh, so overheating compliance is now a, a very common extension to energy performance certification. The most common workflow involves building your certification model um, to, to encompass uh, the overheating um, requirements um, and producing compliance reports. Certification modelling is based on the UK's various national calculation methodologies, or NCMs, uh, which are simplified prescriptive methods to provide an asset rating specifically for benchmarking purposes. But overheating studies require more sophisticated dynamic simulation methods that aren't constrained by the, simplification, the simplifications that these NCMs use. Design Build is a graphical user interface that enables you to build one core model and then switch seamlessly between uh, SBEM, DSM, and Energy Plus full dynamic simulation modes. All of the geometry and relevant model data is retained when you switch between modes. So you simply need to input any additional data relevant to, to your particular purpose. So examples related to overheating might include using a different weather file, um, specifying more appropriate occupancy profiles rather than you, those used for NCM modeling. Our customers tell us that Design Builder's modeling workflow is the fastest available. So our aim in this webinar is to show you enough for you to be able to decide for yourself whether or not that's true. Everything you see today will be live and in real time to give a proper sense of the process involved. We expect the webinar to last around an hour overall with the certification and overheating modeling stages taking around 25 and 20 minutes respectively. We've allocated time after that to answer as many questions as we can. You can submit questions at any time via the questions text box in the control panel and also by emailing Design Builder or contacting Paul at Business Footprint afterwards. Contact details will be on a slide at the end. The webinar is being recorded so you can review it later if required. So to set the context for the modeling um, we're about to do, we'll assume that this is an early stage uh, model where we're testing initial design data to check performance ahead of any regulatory submissions. The NCM location for the model is set to London. Um, if I switch to the model now. Okay. So the location is set to London uh, and the London SIBSI test reference here where the file will be used for the DSM simulation. If you have a BIM model or model created in another tool, you can import that in GBXML form into Design Builder. You can also import floor plans and elevations from CAD plans or other formats, including PDF. What I'm gonna to do today is a fairly simple representative layout of a student accommodation block. So I'll create this geometry freehand. There are plenty of other resources freely available um, to help you learn how to quickly create your geometry. So I'm going to whiz through that part so you can see the workflow from beginning to end without it taking up too, too much time. So now on to creating the UK certification model in Design Builder. So I'm going to start by adding a block. And I'm going to set the block height to three meters. Uh, I'm going to change the uh, the line type to rectangle and just draw a simple uh, 18 meter wide by 
12 meter deep um, plan building. I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm going to use this add surface tool here to take a, a chunk out of that um, out of that first block, that ground floor facade. And once I've done that, I'm going to go to the block level, put it into plan view here. Uh, and I'm going to use our partition tool to subdivide the block and to start creating our thermal zones. Okay. So I'm just subdividing that block and creating um, a series of uh, individual student flats. And on the ground floor, I'm also going to add a student kitchen. Okay, so now I've um, now I've created the uh, the initial ground floor uh, layout. I'm just going to add some uh, some bathrooms to the to each of the flats. Okay, so each of these is a little ensuite for each student flat that's uh, two meters by three meters. Okay, so now I've done that, the next step for me is just to rename my zones. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to use a little snip and sketch tool. Oops. Cancel that. I use this sketch tool and just take a, an image of that for a second and I'll view that. Um, shrink this down. Okay, so I can see the layout here and I know which um, what what my names are going to be. So I'm going to rename um, zone one to flat one. Okay, so flat one. I'm just going to copy the uh, the text there. Next, uh, zone three will become flat two. So zone three. will become flat two. Zone five will become flat three. And zone four will become flat four. Okay, so that's my four flats. Um, I'm now gonna associate the bathroom with the relevant flat so uh, zone eight will be bathroom one bathroom one and again I'm just going to copy that bathroom text zone seven will become bathroom two Zone nine will be bathroom three. And zone 10 will be bathroom four in flat four. Okay, the only other two are zone two, which is a circulation area. and zone six which will be a student kitchen okay so now i've given those zones their names um if i go to the block level i can i can see flat one bath one etc as 
this layout. I'm going to close that and maximize my screen again. Okay. So having renamed the um, all of the zones, uh, it's generally before you move on to adding um, uh, or copying the, the the stories of the building, it's a good idea to first create the most representative story that you can by adding as much data as you can. So in this case, um, I'm going to create a two-story building. The layouts will be very similar. Um, and also the activities will be will be similar and that's the case in in many buildings um, so I'm going to assign the activity data in the ground floor before I copy that block to create um, the second story if I go to the building level here and go to my activity tab um, this includes all of the um, all of the UK NCM activity types. So all of that data is already built into Design Builder. You just choose um, the activity and and you're done. Um, for those watching from outside of UK, please note that that the analysis type for this model is DSM. That's a UK certification mode, and you can see that up in the, the top right hand corner here. So some of the data input screens you see here is um, is tailored specifically for UK certification modeling. So um, by default, the, this is uh, set to an office, this model. I don't want an office. I want to model a university um, student block. So I'm going to set at building level, I'm going to set that to um, bedroom. So this basically now using the design builder data hierarchy and inheritance mechanism i've set that at building level so all of the blocks and um and the zones in the levels below will all inherit that data so i just need to go now to the zones which are um not bedrooms and change those activities so here um, i'll show two methods for this firstly I'll start with uh, the single zones. So I'm going to select here. So I've gone to the circulation zone. I'll select the circulation area there and apply that just to that zone. And for the kitchen, I'm just going to apply the um, the residence kitchen activity. So that sets all of the um, all of the associated gains, uh, occupancy, etc., uh, behind the scenes. Where we want to um, where we want to apply um, multiple um, data points at one time, there's a number of uh, different ways of doing that within Design Builder, and I'll, I'll the first one I'm going to show you is this. So if I want to set my bathroom activities, I can use the zone activities uh, edit template tool, and all I need to do is just select all of the, the bathrooms here in this list. So I'm multiple selecting all of my four bathrooms. Uh, choose the bulk edit and double click on there and just select the bathroom activity. Yeah, happy that that's applied that data to there. So I just need to apply it. And then choosing that will apply all of the relevant data in all parts of the model. So if I close that and go back to my layout tab and go to block level, you can see now that the layout's correct and all of the, the relevant activities which are color coded here have been assigned to, to the correct places. Okay. So now I've done that, I will go back to my building level and I'm going to select and copy this ground floor block and that will take all of its data above. Um, the, only, the only change to the layout on the, um, on the second floor, or the first floor, sorry, will be, um, I don't, that won't be a kitchen. So the kitchen zone will become a student common room. So I'm going to change the name of that zone and I'm going to also change the activity type 
to residence common room. Okay, so again, going back to my layout, I can see here that that's now a common residence common room. Okay, so that's activities done and, and the initial geometry done. I'm going to go now back to building level and start to look at the other data inputs. As this webinar is, is supposed to just be a, a, a simple demonstration to show you the workflow, I'm going to assume that all of the constructions, openings, lighting, HVAC, etc., all of that data is common, consistent across all parts of the building so that I don't have to go through the same process multiple times. The model data um, used in these other outputs follows exactly the same data hierarchy and inheritance rules I discussed when setting the activities, um, i.e. select the most common data at building level and then you only need to change it where it's different in the block zone surfaces or openings below. So let's go to the construction tab now. Um, and let's see what happens when I change the construction template. So at the minute you can see that um, that the template is uh, the project construction and it's all project walls, project roofs, etc. So if I change that, I'm just going to select a different template here, timber frame, super insulated and apply that data at the building level. Now that's changed all of these constructions. So in one click, basically, I've bulk loaded all of my walls, floors, roofs, etc., cetera, um, from one template into all areas of my model. You can create your own templates um, if you do particular common activities for um, particular government departments, etc. Um, and also, just because I've loaded it using a template, I can still copy uh, and edit any of the, the data that's been um, set here. So that's uh, the construction data. I'll now move on to the uh, openings tab. So this is where we specify data for openings such as windows, doors and vents. So I'm going to first um, add a new glazing type. So clicking on the glazing type, add new glazing, and I'll call this my webinar. Webinar glazing. Um, the, there are three um, data definition methods essentially within the NCM or, or the um, certification um, tools in Design Builder. This simple option allows you just to specify the primary um, primary inputs um, for uh, thermal, light, and U-value. Um, and we also, within Design Builder, they're, they're all of the NCM inference and library uh, data libraries are, are built within. So you can select any of the inference or library options if you choose those. Because we're um, we're moving on to to do an overheating study. It kind of makes sense to to show you the the inputs that are going in here. Um, but even if I set a, you know an NCM option, these primary um, primary inputs would still transfer through. Um, so if I set this up here in DSM, that data would still migrate across if I switch to SBEM or when Paul um, switches it across to Energy Plus. Um, so I'm going to leave it set to simple so that you can see um, very clearly which inputs I'm using. So I'm going to assume some fairly typical um, triple glazing values. So I'm going to set the uh, G value or the, the thermal transmittance to, uh, to 0 0.4. So there's an element of solar control in there. Lighting transmittance to 0 0.7 and I'll set the um, I'll set the U value to 0 0.8. So that's reasonable kind of levels for a, a let's say a triple glazing, decent quality triple glazing. And I'll apply that at the building level. So that data again will just now apply to um, 
to all of the zones and blocks and and all, all windows in my building unless I, I navigate to a different level and, and change that data so I can create as many different glazing types as I need and apply them to different facades different windows on each facade using the method I've just shown but I, I don't need to do that for the purposes of today okay so now on to the lighting tab Again, I'll assume common lighting, um, and I, I'm just going to leave it set to the, the kind of default uh, NCM unknown, so fairly pessimistic uh, lighting option at this early stage. But I will, um, let's assume that a decision has been made to use uh, LED throughout the building. So I'll select that, and I'll also apply photoelectric daylight control. But again, I'll, I'll leave that at the default pessimistic NCM values and that will be applied to the relevant zones in the model. Uh, finally, I'll go on to the HVAC tab and I'll add a new HVAC system. Um, again, I'll call that my webinar HVAC. And as Paul's gonna be uh, looking at a, a naturally ventilated building uh, for overheating assessment later, I'll just choose this central heating with um, with radiators option, um, which is by default natural ventilation, and that has low temperature hot water boiler, natural gas, and let's assume a, a condensing boiler efficiency in there, 0.91. Doesn't have mechanical cooling, um, and we'll leave all of these other um, NCM specific inputs at um, at default. So I'm not I'm not intending to optimize this uh, in any way, just really to show you the the process. So again, at building level, I'll select that, and that will apply that HVAC system to um, to all areas of the model. Here we can also, if we want, apply local mechanical exhaust, set a domestic hot water system um, using a very similar process to that I've just shown. Okay, so that's uh, most of the uh, the model data set. So, and that's let's say that let's assume that that's our, our kind of initial design. Um, but having created that initial geometry and input that that model data, let's assume we need to make some geometric changes as the um, as the design evolves. So, I'm first going to inset um, the uh, some parts of this. Uh, first floor south facade to provide small uh, south facing um, balcony areas for these um, these lucky students on let's say that's five meters wide and a meter deep and I'll do the same on this side so that both of these both of these south facing um, zones have a similar kind of um, similar kind of layout for comparison purposes. Okay, um, at this point, I'm going to cancel that um, add surface option, and I'm just going to um, I'm just going to delete some of the superfluous glazing here. So I'll get rid of any any glazing I don't want, and then I'm going to navigate to um, to this zone here, and I'm going to I don't want to keep the default glazing. Um, I'm going to add effectively like a, a patio door. So let's say it's a two by two meter, very nice uh, patio door. So I'll add that there. Go back to building level, and then I can just copy that to uh, my ground and first floor entrances or the, the doors on those on those circulation areas basically just copy that across there and also copy it onto the uh, the 
sort of similar flat on the on the top floor there. Okay, so um, there is one more uh, glazing change that I want to make. So I'm going to go. I'm going to use this this other sort of multiple data input tool here, the load data from template tool, and I'm going to use this to set the glazing on the east and west facades um, to 10%. Uh, to reduce the, the kind of low angle solar gain on, on those facades. Um, it's predominantly bathrooms anyway. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna use a selection filter to do that. So I'm gonna apply um, I'm gonna to all all external surfaces at 90 degree orientation, i.e. on the east side of the building um, and that are in the vertical plane. I'm gonna apply this data to and just to confirm that's 10% glazing applied to those areas and nothing else so if I click OK you should see here that data changes and if I orientate the building round I'm going to do exactly the same here for the west facade 10% glazing yeah and I'm going to uncheck that and apply that only to to my west facade this time. So to all the surfaces on the west side of the building. OK. OK. So that shrinks the, the glazing on those um, on those facades. So the, the last bit of uh, geometry I'm going to do here is just to add a um, an asymmetric roof um, so we can add some PV. Uh, so I'm going to use this um, this construction line tool and then add a um, just add a building block on top of that surface there and I'm also going to use this to provide a bit of extra shading on the south so I'll extend it a meter beyond the original building there and I just zoom in and just if I pick that snap point there that will align that roof with the end of the building there okay so I'm going to put that into plan view um, just navigate to this roof and change the activity type so that that becomes a semi-exterior unconditioned roof space and I will set that so that there's no no glazing in the in the roof uh, and I'm also going to add a um, a, a solar panel to uh, to the south facing part of the roof so I'll just add a panel oops let me just put that into axonometric view sorry back to plan view sorry Okay, so that's my solar panel. And if I navigate to that panel, I'm going to switch that on and I'll just leave it as the uh, the NCM um, the NCM default for um, the panels, um, which again is a relatively pessimistic um, data input. The last thing I want to do is just because we're using DSM, so dynamic um, calculation, we can benefit from um, modeling the effect of adjacent um, buildings to provide shading uh, and reflection. So I'm just going to uh, add a building uh, 10 meters away. Use it again using the construction line, but I'm not going to model a proper building. Um, it will just literally be a simplified representation. So a component block. Let's say that's 15 meters high. Um, I just draw a simple rectangle, and let's make it say 10 meters wide, 
and 25 um, meters long. Okay, so back to axonometric view. Um, and I, I've done everything that I need to do now to, um, to start running simulations. Um, before I run a simulation, obviously I would normally go through a, an extensive data check. Um, we can we can see here, we use this model data. Um, we can use the grid edit tool I showed you earlier to check our data inputs. Um, and we can also, um, if we want to, uh, start to create some nice um, nice images of, of shading, et cetera, for, um, for client reports. So if I switch that on, let's move the sun over here. Okay, so we can see um, the effects of shading at different times of the year, etc. Okay, um, now I've done all that, and let's assume I've done all my QA checking. I'll go to the calculation tab, and I'll just run a um, my DSM simulation. And whilst that's running, let's take a in fact, I'll minimize the design builder screen there. Okay, um, so we're using DSM rather than SBEM, which many of you may be more familiar with SBEM. Um, why might I choose to use that? Well, um, DSM uses hourly weather data. So instead of just 12 weather points um, through the year, i.e. one per month, you you basically use 8,760 weather points, so it gives you a much much greater granularity. Um, and one of the main reasons why DSM simulations are much more accurate, um, assuming uh, all of the model inputs are correct. Um, building and PV, uh, etc. All of the orientation and inclination of the objects in your model are, are modeled at one degree increments rather than the, um, the sort of 15, 45 degree increments that uh, SBEM uses. Um, you have the ability to model geometry uh, in more detail. You can get more benefit from it. Um, uh, you've got more control over thermal bridging, a couple of different methods you can choose from. Um, you have the, you're able to model internal openings to for borrowed light, atria, et cetera, um, level five buildings. Uh, also in improved um, solar and light transmission through uh, daylight, obviously getting a lot more accurate uh, solar information uh, and also shading and reflection. Uh, Interzone heat transfer, better modeling of thermal mass. Overall, it's more accurate but it doesn't necessarily give you a better rating. So let's go back now to Design Builder. So the, the EPC simulation there has run. So we see we've got a, a, a B43. So we can take a look at the, the EPC or the recommendations report there if we want to, but perhaps of more interest is to take a look at what the um, Bruckel is telling us. Uh, so the BER is uh, not less than the TER, so it's not passed in that regard. Um, but it's not a huge amount of, of difference. Um, the main difference is looking at the um, at the results here. Actually, better on the heating side. Our actual module, uh, actual model, um, slightly higher energy consumption from auxiliary and lighting, but a lot more on hot water. I used a lot of the, the basic NCM assumptions in the model, so um, it, it would be pretty straightforward to uh, to improve this to the point where it passed. Okay, um, I'm now going to hand over to Paul Santobi, who will take you through the um, the TM59 workflow. Um, so just bear with me for a 
second whilst I change presenters. Um, Paul is a level five sub Z low carbon energy assessor, complex TM44 and ESOS lead assessor, uh, also a sub Z auditor and a director of Business Footprint Limited. Paul's been in business since 2007 and these days focuses mostly on in use energy consumption audits, ESOS, etc., and predicted energy consumption using Design Builders Energy Plus tools. Paul does a lot of overheating and comfort analysis um, these days, so he's very well placed to talk you through that area of the modelling. So on that note, I will hand over now to Paul. OK, thanks, Dave, and good afternoon, everyone. So my part of this webinar will focus on TM59 residential overheating. And um, as Dave has just mentioned, the intention of TM59 is to provide a standardised, cost-effective and also reliable methodology for adaptive comfort at the design stage. So my aim today is to show you my overheating workflow using Design Builder. Looking at this slide then, um, this is a brief overview of my portion of today. So I'll look at overheating specific model options, firstly, the weather files, PM59 profiles and other data inputs, um, a suggested QA check, simulation set up and run, and then at the end, I will have a look at both sets of those outputs. So moving over to the model then. You can see Dave's model here that, that he's just set up for you. So I'm going to make some minor changes to this model and then quickly run a TM59 analysis. So the very first thing I must do is move out of DSM and into full energy plus mode up here and click OK. So after this, I'm now in full energy plus. I must configure Design Builder to read the TM59 profiles that already are, are uh, preloaded and come with Design Builder. Um, I must configure Design Builder to read those profiles correctly. And I'm going to set those up now under model options. And specifically, it's these items here that I need to, I need to look at. So the first change is occupancy method. I'm going to change that to number of people. The occupancy latent gains, I'm going to change to fixed fraction. Equipment gains to absolute zone power and the lighting gains to power density. I'll also move from scheduled over to calculated NAPVEN. This last change instructs Design Builder to calculate natural ventilation using the Energy Plus airflow network. Moving on to the simulation tab, there's just one other change to make. Under the advanced header down here, I need to dial back the air velocity for comfort calculations back to 0.1. That's to comply with the TM59 standard. Um, incidentally, you could make this 0.8 but only if uh, the building had ceiling fans installed. So once I've done that, I can click OK. 
and move on to the weather file. So up at site level, go to location. And I'm going to assume for today that um, the project's in central London. So it's the London Weather Center template that I want. I'm also going to change the weather data set to a DSY1 2020 I 50 percentile. And I'm going to load that in. So that's the minimum required for TM59. But the standard does suggest that you also run further checks against 2050 and 2080s. But for the purposes of today, I'm just going to leave it at, at this um, DSY 1 2020. So that concludes the general setup of the model. So it's now configured to comply with the TM59 standard and also to read the preloaded profiles correctly. I'm now going to go into the model and make some project specific data inputs. So first off then, activities. I would suggest that you only run a TM59 analysis on the zones or flats that, uh, that are most at risk of overheating. And in this model, it would be, or I suggest it would be the ground floor southwest here, and the first floor southwest bedroom, and also the first floor southeast over here. Potentially, they will receive peak daytime and also late afternoon solar gains. So I'm going to go into activity, load data from template, and I'm just going to find the TM59 single bedroom profile, which is this one here, and load that in, go to target, and I'm just going to target the relevant zones. So as I've just mentioned, it's flat one on the ground floor and flat one and flat four on the first floor. Click OK. I'm also going to target the common circulation zones. So I'm going to find that now under residential and there's the common circulation areas and target the ground and the first floor. Uh, the reason I've done that for the common circulation areas is that although it's not a sort of a, a mandatory focus of TM59, um, if those areas do exceed the target, so if they do overheat, then you should include them in your final report as a point of you know, potential um, problem. So having done that, all of the profile data, uh, such as occupancy densities, schedules, latent fractions, set points and uh, equipment gains um, have been preloaded into the zones of my of my focus. So moving on to constructions then. Here you can see that all of today's constructions have carried across into energy energy plus and there's no further work for me to do here. So I can move on to glazing. 
Dave has already modeled the glazing. So now all I need to do is configure the free aperture areas for my chosen flats. So if possible, this should be actual data from the glazing manufacturer or installer. But if this isn't available, then it needs to be calculated. And you need to account for security, pollution, noise, uh, perhaps privacy, and also any structural details such as internal reveals. So I'm going to do this using the model data grid tool, which I find particularly useful. So it's openings and view. And I'm just going to modify this slightly just for the purposes of today. And I'm going to select flat one and flat four. So this also includes flat four on the ground floor, but I can simply ignore that um, for today. So here's the free aperture area. And I'm just going to select all of the windows, go to edit and bulk edit. And I'm going to change these to 10%. I'm also going to focus on the two small windows on the first floor. Um, on the east and the west, which are these ones here. And I'm going to change those to 25%. I've done this because the first floor windows could have a reduced security, noise and privacy risk. So they, they, they should be able to take uh, larger nighttime openings. Finally, I need to confirm that the correct schedule has been loaded into my zones and you can see they are listed there. So that's, that's fine. And I'm just going to apply that. and click out of that. So that's my openings completed. I'm now going to move on to lighting. I need to change the lighting template over to TM59. Which is preloaded here. So I'm just going to load that into my template. And I also need to ensure that the correct schedule is loaded again. So I go to residential and find TM59 lighting. I'm at building level. So all of those data changes will flow through all of my zones as appropriate. I can now move on to my HVAC tab. And all of these data has been carried across. So there's no actual data input that I need to do here. However, I just need to confirm a few things before, before I move on. First off, heating must be switched on. So this is an annual overheating calculation. So heating must be turned on. And also cooling must be switched off as this is a nat vent study. Finally, the natural ventilation must be switched on as without this, the airflow network won't be operational. So that actually concludes the 
data input for my for my project. However, before running a simulation, it's really imperative that, that you QA and check your model. Um, in this case, I want to confirm that the windows are operating correctly and providing the, the ventilation into the building as, as expected. However, to do this creates a, a large quantity of additional data. So I'm only going to target the windows in one of my zones and, and just, and just see, see how they're behaving. So I'm going to do this now, run a simulation, and whilst that simulation is running in the background, I am then free to go back into my model and make any further changes, should I need to, or as in this case, simply run the standard TM59 test. And then I'm going to look at both sets of results. So um, I'm going to go to flat one. and go to model options simulation tab and i'm just going to allow custom outputs once i've done that i'm going to go to that outputs tab and i'm just going to select a few choice items of, of data. So it's store surface output, store openings, and it's these two here, airflow in and airflow out. And for the purposes of today, I'm just going to deselect these, these other ones, which I don't actually, actually need. So it's airflow in and out. So having selected that additional data, for my test flat, I'm going to go to simulation. And it's sub hourly because that's the increased level of detail that I, that I need. I'm just going to pick a typical summer week. Um, let's give it a, a name, call it event check, something like that. It needs to be six time steps. And I just need to confirm that the simulation manager is indeed on. And that's fine. I can run that now. Once I'm sure that started, which it is, I can now move away from the simulation manager and go back into my model. What I need to do is actually only select the zones that I, I wish to look at for my TM59 test. So I'm going to go to building level deselect, and then I just want to switch on the zones that I'm particularly interested in. So as I mentioned before, circulation and flat one on the ground, and then circulation and flat one and flat four on the first floor. So once I've done that, back to my simulation tab. And I don't need that sub hourly now. It's an annual simulation. Let's give it a name, suitable name, uh, TM59, first run, something like that.
confirm that it's still six time steps. I'm going to switch on these solar options because we do have um, uh, neighboring buildings. Output tab, I'm going to switch off those custom outputs because I, I no longer need that additional data. And, but I, I do need to switch on SIBC TM59, corridors, and the 59 NAT vent rules. So I need to switch that on, otherwise the TM59 results just won't be loaded into the results viewer. And this final option must be selected as the TM59 rules stipulate windows should only open when the room is occupied and above 22 degrees. So this actually differs slightly from the standard Energy Plus controls, hence the need for this, for this controls override here. So again, I'm just going to make sure that Simulation Manager is on and I'm going to click OK. As you can see, my vent check simulation has finish, finished. So I'm going to load that into Design Builder and we can have a look. So I'm only going to target flat one and I'm just going to target one of the windows, so that westerly window there. And it's sub hourly. And I'm actually going to clear this data and go to detailed. And I'm just going to load the airflow in and out, which is the data we want, but also wind direction and wind speed just to give us some some additional context there so looking at these results then gives you a lot of detail and if i choose point this looks interesting here so from this point you can see the wind direction has been beneficial up to this point for that window. But from this point onwards, the change in wind direction and also wind speed means that there's a corresponding drop in ventilation and cooling, as you can see here. So this is as expected. You can also see that at other times we have some, some significant um, times of airflow out. And also you can see actually that it's, that it's quite clean. There's very few instances of simultaneous airflow in and out. Which would, which would otherwise, otherwise indicate perhaps some inefficient venting. So having looked at this, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that the model is operating, operating as it should do. And I can go back to my simulation manager and load the TM59 results. So I'm in results viewer, and there's a tab here for the TM59 results. So there they are there. So for a first run, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, as you can see, the ground floor southwest, that actually passes, as does the first floor southeast. But it's just this first floor southwest 
that that um, that has failed. Looking at the corridors, both of them pass, so there would be no need to flag that up in your final report as, as something of, of particular potential concern. So it's just this southwest first floor flat. So um, perhaps some localised shading to the western window, or, or maybe mechanical ventilation is required there. Um, you could use blinds, but if blinds cover any portion of the open window, which, which they're likely to do in reality, then the effect of this on the free area of ventilation must be calculated and, and therefore reduced. And also you would need to show the results of both with and without the blinds in your, in your final report. So blinds may help, but potentially not as much as you would um, initially expect, perhaps. So that concludes my, my um, TIM 59 calculation. So as you can see with the full set of specs beforehand, running a TIM 59 analysis is, is pretty swift. So, um, so I think it's now back to Dave for any, any questions and, and thank you. Okay, thanks, Paul. That was, uh, that was a really useful summary of the of the TM59 process. Um, just bear with me for a minute, folks. I'm going to change uh, back to myself as the presenter. Okay. So, um, hopefully that, that's given you a, a really good feel for the whole workflow and a sense of how much more joined up and intuitive the modelling process is in Design Builder. If you want to find out more, we would, of course, be happy to speak to you. So, please uh, feel free to either ask a question in the webinar control panel or contact us using the details on the um, on the bottom of the the screen here. Thanks for listening. We hope you found this interesting and informative. 